dealing with solving for the last like three days. And so literally equations is still solving, but now instead of just having one variable and lots of numbers, so like what we had before was something like this. Where we have only one variable, variable x. Well, now we're going to deal with equations where we have two or more variables. So you might have a variable in your answer. All right. So it's, again, still the same process, just with some more variables in it. So this is good because it's still practicing our solving equations, which is a very, I mean, we're doing that the rest of the year. All right, so a literal equation is an equation with two or more variables. An equation with two or more variables. The most common one you'll see is x and y. You see both. We're gonna be learning this year how to solve, or so how, sorry, how to graph ver, uh, equations with x and y. All right, so you'll see these two uh, terms, or these two phrases here as our instructions. Solve for and write as a function of x or in terms of x. Those are the types of instructions you'll see for these problems. So all that means, so solve for, we're trying to get the variable by itself. So get the given variable. by itself. So we're solving just like we did before. Solve like we did before. All right, and the way that we solved before is we got rid of parentheses, get rid of parentheses. Then we combined like terms. And then got our answer of x equals or y equals. We got the variable by itself. So the main thing is we're going to get the given variable by itself. And they'll tell us which one to solve for. So write as a function of x or in terms of x. Um, this means we want to solve for the other variable. Solve for other variable. And usually the other variable is y. So again, these are the types of instructions you'll see. Solve for, write as a function of x, or in terms of x. All right, so our first example, it says rewrite the equation so that y is a function of x. So see, it tells us right there, y is a function of x. That means we want y equals. All right, so we want our final answer to be y equals. And it says a function of x, that means x is going to be within our answer. Okay, so it's the same thing as before. We want to get y by itself, so we're trying to get this all by itself. So what do we need to move to the other side? So Brink, what do you think we would move to the other side? We want to get the 6y by itself, so what are we going to move to the other side? What are we going to move to the other side? Am I saying your name right or am I saying it wrong? So what are we going to move to the other side? Thank you. Very good. The 3x. So the only thing that's left is the 3x. We need to move that to the other side. And P1. If my 3x is negative 3x, how do I move that to the other side? So we're trying to get this over to their side. It's negative 3x with the opposite of negative. Right, so we want to add 3x to their side. All right, now again, you need to be organized and careful with your information here. Negative 3x plus 3x. What does that give me? 
cancels out, right? It's zero. So we have 6y, and that's a positive 6y. Now be careful, what a lot of you were wanting to do before is say 15x. But notice these are not like terms. We have 12 and we have positive 3x. So they're not like terms, so we can't put it together. So I recommend you put your x first, so 3x plus 12. We have positive 3x, we have positive 12. Remember, we can't combine together because it's not like terms. All right, um, Morgan, we need to get y by itself. So what do we do to get y by itself? Divide by 6. And we have to to the entire side. All right, again, be careful with your organization here. 6 divided by 6 is 1, 1 y. And then over here, we need to simplify this. Let's do our part, because we love division. Three x over six. When you put, I'll go ahead and write this out. Three six x plus twelve six. Now, when you put this into your calculator to help you out with your fractions, three six. Anybody know what that reduces down to? One half. Good. So we have one half x. And what's twelve divided by six get me? Two. Two. So that's my final answer there. So again, it's a y equals, we want to get y equals, and notice you still have an x in your answer, and that's fine. That's what a literal equation is. You still have variables in your answer. Any questions on that? Notice it's the same process as before, and now it's not just numbers. Okay, so let's move a little bit quicker through the other ones. Number, actually, you know what, let's move on to number four. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. All right, so let's take a look at number four because there's a lot more work to do there. There's a U. All right, number four. Do we have any parentheses there? Because remember, we saw we would get rid of parentheses, combine like terms, and then move things to the same side. Do we have any parentheses with number four? No. All right, so let's take a look at like terms. All right, I'm going to attempt drawing this box again to help us out. can we combine together here? Darling, what do you see that we can put together? Very good. The 4x and the negative 8x. So positive 4x and negative 8x. What does 4 minus 8x give us? Very good. Negative 4x. Okay. Right? Plus 4. Let me move this out of the way. Equals 2y minus 5. Now again, it's said to write y as a function of x, meaning we want to get y by itself. All right, so Ivanya, if we want to get y by itself, we want to get that all alone, what do we need to get rid of on the right side of my equation? We don't want to divide yet. You're right that eventually we're going to have to divide by 2. But we need to get rid of the 5 here, right? Because we want to get this by itself. So if I'm currently subtracting 5, what's the opposite? Right, we want to add it. Because to cross it equals, we have to add the same thing to both sides. All right, so add 5, add 5. All right, so again, be careful. We have negative 4x. Positive 4, positive 5 is plus 9. 2y, and those cancel out. Okay, and again, we want to get y by itself. So, Trey, I see I have 2y. 
What do I need to do to get y all by itself? Divide by what? Divide by 2. Good. And again, we have to do this to the entire side. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, write it. I'm going to flip it so we have y y equals first. All right, so then let's do our heart here. Gentlemen, I want you to be writing down what we're doing here. Okay. All right, so I have negative 4x over 2 plus 9 over 2. All right, and then let's see if that simplifies at all. Negative 4 divided by 2 gives me negative 2x. And 9 halves does not simplify. If you put this in your calculator, you'll get back 9 halves. Remember, we do not want decimals in here. Fractions only. So I don't want you to be putting down uh, 4.5. I want to see that fraction. Okay, questions on that? All right, let's take a look at the next one. All right, so we've got somewhere we have to deal with parentheses. Which one do you guys want to do, five or six? Six? All right, let's do six. All right, number six. So we've got that one-fifth in front. Remember, if we have parentheses, we need to get rid of it. Trey, how do we get rid of parentheses? Distribute. Distribute, good. I'm going to distribute my one-fifth. All right, so one-fifth times 25 is 5. One-fifth times 5 is 1, so minus 1y. One All right, on my left side of the equation, there's no like terms. On the right side of my equation, there's no like terms. But we need to get our y's together, right? See how we have two different y's? We need to get those together because we're trying to get y equals. All right, so what do you guys want to do? Add the 1y or subtract the 9y? Subtract 9y? Okay, we can do that. So subtract 9y. And again, be careful and organized with your work. 5 minus 10y equals 4x plus 13. Oh, sorry, did I do something? It was 4x minus 10y. Thanks. I magically turned it into a positive there. So this should be minus 9y. All right, so if it was minus 9y, what should we have done? Added. Good. Thank you so much. Well, that's nice because that's going to give me a positive answer. Sorry, guys. Did I mess you up? Yes. All right, so we have 5. Negative 1 plus 9, what's that give me? Positive 8, good. Positive 8y. Then we have 4x. Negative 9y, positive 9y cancel out. Plus 13. Great. So we look good now. Thank you so much. All right, we need to get y by itself. So here's why. Let's move everything else to the other side. How can I move? What do I need to move over? The 5. So we're going to subtract our 5. And make sure you combine that with like terms. 5 minus 5 is 0. So we have 8y. Are we good? Okay. And then 4x plus 8. 13 minus 5 is 8. Be careful. Make sure you're subtracting the 5 with its like term of 13. Don't subtract with your 4x because they're not like terms. All right, we still need to get y by itself. We're almost there. We're one step away. Muhammad, do you have an idea what we'll do next? That's good thinking. If we move the 8y over, go ahead, what? 
Right, divide by 8, because we're trying to get y by itself, right? So we want to finally separate those two. Train, NQ1, please stop talking while I'm talking. So, again, we need to separate the a and y now. Q1. Divide the entire side by 8. My 8's reduced down to 1, so I have y. And then again, we, got, we need to make the heart. We love division. Let's see if we can knock this out in one step. Four eighths, what does that reduce down to? One half, good, so one half x. And an eight divided by eight? Good, so plus one. And what's my final answer today? Questions on that? Okay, so let's take a look at some problems where there are no numbers and just variables. We still go about it the same way. It's just we're going to be subtracting, dividing, multiplying by variables rather than numbers. Now, these equations are actually equations used uh, in the real world. So uh, this, is, this is distance equals rate times time. This is volume is length times width times height. Here we have area um, and perimeter. So these are actual equations. So we're learning how to uh, solve for a certain variable with it. So make sure you read the instructions. It says solve the following literal, equa literal equations for the indicated variable. That means they're going to tell you which one you want to solve for. So number one says D equals RT. And they ask us to solve for T. And that means we want our final answer. This here means we want our answer to be T equals. We're trying to get T by itself. Okay, well let's take a look what we have. We have D equals R times T. Well, we need to get t by itself. What do we have with our t? The r. And what are we doing with those two? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. We're multiplying them. What's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing. So we just need to divide by what? r. We do that on both sides. All right? So d divided by r, we don't know what that is. We can't simplify it at all. And what does r divided by r reduced down to? Right, just one t. Right, this reduces down to one, so we have just t. And let's write this in the nice form, t equals d divided by r. And that's it. That's all you do. You would have done the same thing if we would have had d equals 3t. You would have divided by 3 and had t equals d over 3. So it's the same idea, just now we have variables. All right, questions on that? Let's take a look at number three. All right, so this is area equals one half times d sub one, d sub two. So that's the distance of one length and the distance of a second length. And they're asking us to solve for d sub one. So we want d sub one equal to the end. All right. We currently have area equals one half d sub one, d sub two. Let's get rid of that pesky fraction. So we have one half. How can we get rid of that? How can we get rid of one half? We did this earlier. We don't distribute. Multiply by what? Reciprocal. If we multiplied by 1, that wouldn't get us anywhere. We would just still have a equals 1 half d1, d2. So we want to multiply by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal means we just flip the fraction. So we're going to multiply the entire side by 2 over 1, which 2 over 1 is just the same thing as 2. So then I have 2a equals 2 times 1 half cancels out. And then I had D1, D2. Why did I not distribute my 2 to the D1, D2? Why didn't I distribute that there? Does anyone know why? Notice the difference. Oh! 
What is the difference between these besides the Y? There is a number where the Y is, but what do we know about the operations? Go ahead, Joe. Right. One is addition, the other one's multiplication. We have to distribute for addition because what we're saying is 3 times x and 3 times 2. But here, multiplication, it's just 3 times x times y. So we don't have to distribute that. We distribute only when there's addition there. So that's why I didn't distribute there. So be careful with that. Okay. So, again, we're trying to get D1 by itself, but we're still stuck with something with it. We saw that D2 with it. So what are we going to do? How do I get rid of my D sub 2? What am I currently doing with these guys? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Multiplying and the opposite multiplying? Divide! All right, so then I have 2a over d sub 2 equals, well, these reduced down to 1 equals d1. Again, let's write this in the nice format, d sub 1 equals 2a over d sub 2. That's my answer there. Whenever you get stuck, look to see what operation you're doing, and then you do the opposite of that to move it to the other side. All right, any questions on that? Okay. Let's see, which one should we do next? How about let's do number six. Number six deals with that fraction. We don't like this. So let's go ahead and do this one. Okay, so notice we're trying to solve for y, so we want y equals. Now we need to get rid of this 3. We're currently dividing by 3. So the opposite of that would be multiply by 3. So both sides. So that cancels out. So we have 2x plus y equals z times 3, which is just 3 times z. All right, and again, we want to get y by itself. So I currently have 2x plus y. What do I need to do to get rid of that 2x? Subtract it. Good. Subtract 2x. And again, be careful. Z and x are not like terms, so we cannot combine these together. So you have just minus 2x plus 3z. Or you could have said 3z minus 2x. And that's your final answer. Any questions? Okay, we're going to take a look at let's go with number 11. There's a lot of words there. That's good for us. All right, number 11 says that Kristen saw the temperature is 82 degrees Fahrenheit outside. She knows that F equals 9 fifths C plus 32, where F represents the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit and C represents the temperature in degrees Celsius. Which is the closest to the temperature outside in degrees Celsius? All right, so they gave us a lot of information there, and we need to figure out what are they even asking for. So they give us our equation. What else did they give me? What other information did they give me? Trey, go ahead and read through that. Find out what other information they gave you. The entire word problem. I want you to read it to yourself and figure out what other information they gave me other than the equation. And then Q1, I'm going to have you tell me what it is we're trying to find. Thank you. Okay. 
Trey, what'd you find out? That's what key water is best to do. But yes, they want us to find out what is the close temperature outside in degrees Celsius. So we want to know what is C equal to. So then key one, do you have an idea of what else they gave us? Look at that first sentence. Um, what was that, 82? Yeah. And so we know it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. What letter does that represent? 82 is what? Fahrenheit, which is F, right? So we know F equals 82. Very good, guys. All right, so they want us to find out what temperature is in degrees Celsius. And they gave us the F is 82. We've done problems like this before. If we know that F is 82, what can we do with my equation? Oh. Substitute it in, right. Take 82 and substitute it in for F. So 82 equals 9 fifths C plus 32. All right, now it's like just a normal solving problem that we've done before. There's only one variable. All right, so parentheses, none. Like terms on one side, we don't have any. So let's go ahead and get our variable by itself. We want to get 9 to C alone. So we need to subtract that 32. Subtract my 32 from both sides. 82 minus 32, 50. And we have 9 fifths C, and 32 minus 32 cancel out. Are we done? What do we need to do? Right, we have to divide. We needed to get C by itself. So we could divide by 5 ninths, but what's easier than dividing by 5 ninths? Small. So, oh, ooh, I messed that up. Wow. We could divide by 9 fifths, but what's easier than divide by 9 fifths? Multiply by the reciprocal. Good. And our reciprocal here is 5 ninths. So you're going to need your calculator for this. Make sure in your calculator you do 5 divide by 9 in parentheses. So in your calculator, it's going to look like this. 5 divided by 9, close parentheses, times 50. All right, what does 5 ninths times 50 give you? 51, put that in your calculator, please. 5 ninths times 50. And Hector, I'm going to have you tell me what 9 fits times 5 ninths is. So this piece here, 9 fifths times 5 ninths. I want you to put that in your guide when you see the Oh, for this one you got 250 over 9? Q1, what did you get for this one? 5 ninths times 50. 250 over 9? Okay, go ahead and give me the decimal for it. What was the decimal for that? What was it? Good, 27.7. All right. And then what does 9 fifths times 5 ninths give me? Right, it just cancels out to be 1. So we have 1C. It reduces down to 1. So if C is 27.7. Do you see that answer there? No. Let's look at what it asks. Which is closest to that temperature? So which number is closest? 28. 28. Very good. So that's my answer. Great. Questions on that? Okay. So I want you to try, let's see what problems we have here on the back. I want you to try numbers. Uh, let's have you do 10, 9, Do number 7, 9, and 10. Give these a try, and then we'll go over that. Gentlemen. Okay, so starting with number 7, we need to get x by itself, so we want x equals. 
If I cover up my x, I see I need to get rid of my y. So I subtract y from both sides, and I get x over 3. My y's cancel. These are not like terms, so it's z minus y. If I cover up my x again, I still have to get rid of that 3. So instead of dividing by 3, I multiply by 3. But I have to multiply the entire side by 3. So my 3's cancel. I get x equals, I have to distribute my 3, 3z minus 3y. I have x equals, so that is my final answer. All right, so then on 9 and 10, it says we need to get x by itself, so I subtract y. 360 minus y equals 2x. I need to get that x by itself, so divide by 2. So I get x equals 360 minus y divided by 2. All right, and then number 10. We need to solve for g1. Again, I need to get rid of my 2, so I multiply it by 2. So I have 2m equals g1 plus g2. I need to get g1 by itself, so I subtract g2. They are not like terms, so I have 2m minus g2 equals g1. G1 equals 2m minus G2. All right, your homework is worksheet 13, which I'll pass out to you now. Make sure you do not leave without your homework.